guys and welcome back to our tutorial here on YouTube. What we're going to go through is the third in the final series of the beginner's guide to learning SketchUp for architecture. Uh, as we previously stated before, um, this can be used for other applications as well. So just uh, don't be worried if you're using it for something else. Just these three tutorials will benefit you if you want to learn SketchUp. Now what you'll see is I've recently upgraded. Um, so it might look a little bit different, uh, probably because the woman's different. Uh, obviously before it was a guy, um, and now they've upgraded again in SketchUp Pro 2016. So you see we've got this woman who, if we zoom in, um, looks like she's about to do some DIY. Um, okay, we'll go with that. Um, so what we're going to go through is the final part, as I've said, uh, and a few of the final uh, things that you will need to be able to get the basics of SketchUp. Don't worry if you're using an older version of SketchUp or if you're not using the pro version as well, this will cover you. Um, so right, we'll jump straight in. So you'll know from video three, especially if you've just watched video three, uh, is we created what looked like a small house. Um, so these things which I'll go through now you should already know. Um, and what I'm gonna do for today's video is start with an empty box, uh, which is probably a little bit bigger, but roughly uh, like a room. Uh, and then you'll find out in a minute why exactly uh, we're going to be doing this. So the first thing we're going to go through is what's called the follow me tool. Uh, if you look on the left hand side, you can see it here. Uh, there's no shortcut for this one, unfortunately. Um, but you can see it. it looks slightly like the push and pull tool, but it's in a curve instead. Uh, and what we're going to use this for today is it's, it's very similar to the uh, push and pull tool. Um, but obviously the push and pull tool is restricted to going around corners. Um, that's where the follow me tool comes into its element. Now a really good application for this is drawing skirting boards or architrave or different parts internally and externally as well. So what we're going to do is the way we're going to do this is we're going to draw some skirting board and use that all the way around the room uh, without having to do four individual ones. So what we'll do is we'll start off um, in one corner of the room and we'll zoom in. Okay, so roughly uh, our skirting board, we go to the pencil, we want it to be roughly, you can see, obviously I've zoomed in quite a lot, let's say 150 mil high. So again, type in 150, you'll see that in the bottom right hand corner. Click enter, and you'll see a, it makes a small little dot, and you can actually pinpoint on it to the 150. And all we're going to do here is come back out, let's say 10 mil. Um, we'll go down another 10 mil. From there, another 10 mil. And then we'll go right to the floor, so it's 20 mil. But we want to make it a bit more uh, interesting. So what we'll do is we'll go 10 mil down. And then what we'll do is we'll head over and we'll grab the arc tool. So here you can see, click on those two, we'll click out and you can see we've created a half circle. All you need to do then is delete those other two lines that we created before. Now, if we were to just use the push pull tool, Either by clicking on it or pressing P. You'll see now when we extend, we get what looks like a relatively normal skirting board. The issue with this is once we get to a certain end, okay, we can hit it, but we can't go around that corner. As you can see, we're limited in one plane, in one direction. So what we do is by using the follow me tool, you'll see if we zoom in, this time you'll see as you pull it out, it creates a black face on the plane that we're pushing and pulling and also creates a red line. Now this red line is the direction you want to go in. So you can see we can drag it all the way to the end. And then once we hit that corner, okay, we can move in the other direction of the plane. Then you can see it's followed on in exactly the same shape. And all you do is while keep holding the mouse left click button down, do exactly the same for all four corners. Okay, if you're not used to the controls, okay, it might seem a little bit tricky. Just make sure you don't let go uh, with the left click button. 
and you can see we can go all the way back to that corner. Okay, we'll zoom in for this part. Okay, so we're going all the way. Okay, and we'll go slightly past it, and boom. Okay, so now you can see. Okay, we've created that all the way around the room. As you can see, if we have to zoom out. You can see it expands all the way around the room. And then what you could also do is colour it, which we'll go through in a second. Okay, so you've got that now. Is the push pull tool. Sorry, the follow me tool, which is the upgrade to the follow me tool. A quick one while we're here as well is also the measuring tool. On the left hand side, you'll see it. Uh, tape measure or T is the shortcut. So we press T. And what the tape measure does is once you click on a certain area, okay, and then let go with the mouse button, click to another area, and you can see down in the bottom right hand corner. You can see 6323 millimeters because that's what we're working in. Another really good one for it is if you click in the center of a plane, okay, you see the midpoint there, click and then pull, okay, you can actually measure a line as far as you want. So if we wanted a line perpendicular to this at two meters, type in two meters and you see we've got that perfect line. So now we know exactly two meters from the skirting board what that would look like, and you can do that on any plane really. Okay, you don't necessarily have to click the midpoint. So we do two meters from there. And again, we've got that line, which as you can see is exactly two meters. Okay, and what you can actually do is you can, okay, if you click on view at the top right hand, at the top, you can see the, the guides. If you don't want to view them, uh, you can click them off and they'll disappear. And then you can click and you view them again. Okay, and you'll see what happens is they, they infinitely extend which is really good if you want to keep something in the same plane. Okay, so what we do is you just delete those ones. So that's the measure tool. Really useful, used quite a lot when you're doing architecture models. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at materials. We're just going to look at the basic materials in this one because these tutorials are just basic ones. Um, what I'll go on to in later videos, if you search uh, for my later videos, uh, we'll go into V-Ray uh, and a few other different rendering applications and how to do materials properly. Um, at the moment, they will look very 2D uh, on the plane. What we'll go on to later on is when we do rendering, we'll make it look a lot more 3D. Uh, but these basics is what you need now. Uh, are very simplistic, but you need them later on for when we do into more complicated applications. So if you look on the left-hand side, You'll see the paint bucket tool, okay, similar to Microsoft Paint actually. Uh, you can also click B as well, that's the shortcut for that one if you didn't know already. By clicking B, you get the paint bucket tool. Now you'll see this box comes up, okay, uh, and on the top hand, on the top, you've got either selection from a color wheel to choose a color if you just want to do colors. Uh, you can do a slider for your RGB, etc. Uh, and if you know the hex color, you can type this in here. Um, this is really useful if you are designing a room and you know exactly the hex color for the paint. Uh, you can type it in there uh, and it'll come up the exact color. And then you can see spectrum uh, and the different pencils, etc. But what we'll be focusing on is the textures. Now you'll see you've got the general colors you've got in here. So you can just select different colors. You can scroll through. But what we're going to focus on is the other ones that you can see here, such as glass and mirrors, metal, roofing and stone. What we look at first is the, is the pardon me, not the stone. Okay, we'll go up and we'll use brick, cladding and sliding. Okay, so you can see all the different ones. What we're going to use for this one is the brick roof dark. So all you do is click on it. And then as you go back over, you'll see the paint bucket tool appear. Uh, and whatever surface you want to create, in that one, okay, you just click, and now you can see we've got within there a brick wall, okay, and then all you do is if you wanted it anywhere else, you just click the walls and it creates it like that. And there you go, we've got a brick room.
and for instance if we wanted so if you look through uh, we've got different ones for different areas so for instance wood we want wooden floor uh, let's choose the wood floor dark and you see that we've now got a wooden floor in this makeshift room now what you might want to do is for instance you look on here the wood is going in a certain direction you might want to change that so all you do is right click on the texture you've just added go down you'll see here texture okay and click position now you'll see four boxes that come up four little uh, pins that come up okay you've got the green yellow blue and red if you hover over you'll see what exactly they do okay so this one the green one scales and rotates the yellow one distort texture which is um, so that's for perspective the blue one you can see is the scale or shear uh, and the red one is just to move it so for instance if you wanted to move you can move it like so this is pretty good for tiles um, because often half of the tile might get chopped off and you might want to move them etc that's really good for this but all we want to do is we want to rotate it so we click on the green now you'll see it actually changes the size as well so that's what you can do with that one is change the size on me on this one seems to have lost the floor just add that back in and there's that floor again so yeah once again we want to rotate the floor right click texture position we're going to rotate that floor so now deselect it and there you go we've now got it in the other plane what we'll also do is just for the skirting board so we want to call it the skirting board now what you can either do is for instance okay why don't we do that in a what's that so wood veneer as you can see we can either click that or what you can do is you just is go on the selection tool and if you click if you want to select more than one thing you can click three times and then if you were to paint that it paints everything but obviously we don't want everything so what we do in that instance is once we've selected everything okay we just press the shift key and then select the things we don't want to paint okay so we don't want to paint them click on the wood veneer again paint and now if we zoom out and now we've just painted that in a wood veneer very nice okay so so far we've gone through the follow me tool the measuring tool and the basics of materials okay so there's many materials you can add just have a look through them um, i'm sure you'll find if you're just using it for basic reasons not for rendering you'll find a lot in there which is very useful what we're going to go on to next is some of the camera tools if you look in the toolbar on my left hand side okay you'll see at the bottom here we've got position camera okay this is very useful uh, especially in tight spaces when you're designing a room is to put it in a certain area so what you do is click on position camera okay and just imagine like a normal camera on a tripod okay so we want to place it in this area um, so we can view the rest of the room all you do is what you'll see is actually uh, it snaps to a surface now if you want to higher or lower I'll show you what you need to do but click on there and you'll see it moves now if you see in the bottom right hand corner you've got an eye height okay this gives you an average eye height um, if you want a different height you can just enter it at this point now so for instance if we wanted an eye height of 1800 millimeters type in 1800 and you'll see it jumps up it automatically as well uh, jumps onto you'll see the look around tool which gives you this uh, sketching of an eye as you can see as the cursor and all you do on this one is it stays exactly in the same position but you click and drag and it'll move you around and there you go 
So for instance, now we can use that to be able to export an image and that's where we want the camera. Now, if you want to save this picture, um, so say for instance, we've, we've grabbed this, but we want to do more work to it, but we like where the camera is facing. What you do is go up to window uh, and you'll see here, you go down to scenes, click on scenes and you see this little box appears. All you do is click the plus. Okay. So add scene. Okay. So we've got scene one. If you want to change the name, um, is right click on it and you can rename the scene. So we want to rename it living room one or living one. And there you go. That's changed now. Now what happens is for instance, if we wanted to move out, um, and we wanted to create a roof over this. So now if we create a roof over there, you'll see, obviously it's not easy to position the camera in there, but if we click on living one now, okay, we automatically move into that space and you can see we've got a ceiling. Um, so what we could actually do is uh, we'll reverse the face on that to make it white. And we've now got this room set up with that okay as well if you want to if you've clicked on something um, and you want to select nothing i.e you don't want any wall selected all you do is go on edit and select none or you can use shift command a so we'll use shift command a and everything's deselected. So just to, you can close the scenes one, just to give you an idea again, paint bucket tool, okay, you can have a look on there, different ones, so just as an example. Okay, what we'll do is polish concrete old, okay, we've now got a polished concrete ceiling, and again, if you just wanted to look around, okay, we've now selected in that room. Another great tool as well, which is good uh, for later on, which you'll do is when you want to do tours of a building. So say for instance, you've designed your perfect house uh, and you often see this on programs like Grand Designs or in your country you might have uh, different offshoots of the Grand Designs type of program. As you'll see, they often walk around um, and on the left hand side, you'll see two little footsteps walk. And then from there, all you do is click down Okay, and then you move slowly in the direction you want to go. Okay, if you move it further, you walk faster. And again, you can move backwards, you can move left and right. And later on in tutorials, I'll show you exactly how you can record all this as well, which is great, especially if you want to show it to clients or you want to show it to any of your friends to show how good your skills are. And you can walk around your house. Um, and this will actually walk through doors uh, and stop when you get to walls, etc. Uh, although you can turn this off. And this is a great feature. And again, if you wanted to go back to that initial view, just open that scenes toolbar again, click on living one. You see, we've moved back into that position. Okay, that's it for all of the basics in SketchUp for architecture from our tutorials. If you have any questions, comment below. If there's any tutorials you specifically need that I haven't done yet, comment below. Uh, and thank you for watching. Um, hopefully now you've got the basics of SketchUp for architecture uh, and we can move on later on uh, to more complicated things. Thanks for watching and cheers. Goodbye.